Hi folks, <clears throat> so I walked out here to uh, get back on the bench. I'd like to start putting stuff up on a, at least a little more regular basis. I heard something beep and it was obvious something wanted a battery. But it only beeped about every 30 seconds and I'm walking around the garage, wait, wait for a beep, oh it's over here, wait for a beep, oh it's over here. Finally, <clears throat> I'm standing here and I realize it's coming from up above and the garage door opener wanted a battery. So, mystery solved, battery ordered, replace that. I don't know what it needs, such a big battery. It was a big lead, lead acid cell. Anyway, got that straightened out, and Steve came by this morning to drop off two things and pick up three. Or is it drop off three and pick up two? More like it. And we talked about this Pioneer SX6000 he left here. He said it's got a nasty thump, and I worked with it I didn't hear anything but apparently it's be when you go from FM to anything else so we're going to take a look at this I think I know where the problem is but I'm going to show you what it sounds like what it looks like and then see if we can't fix it this is the unit it's pretty nice looking I really like the shade of blue in the uh, display here but you can hear when we go from FM we get that thump and I'm going to put it up on the scope, and then we're going to talk a little about that. There's the scope. There's a little bit of glare. It's nice weather out here. I have the garage door open. So you can kind of see something, so we're going to have to slow the sweep speed. <clears throat> okay, we are in alternate sweep now. What alternate sweep is, is it completes one sweep and starts another. You can really see it here. So we're going to go to chop sweep, which goes back and forth rapidly. But you already see the problem. All we see is a couple of dots. So it's really hard to see what's going on. You can see the thump. But this is where I pull out the DSO. Because that thing will show you things that are really hard to see on an analog scope. Both are tools. Both have their place. Okay, so I've tapped off out of the preamp out because the noise is coming before the power amp and that's the easiest way to tell on something like this. If your unit has pre-main jumpers or pre-main ins and outs, it's a great way of isolating half of the unit. This noise is coming from before the power amplifier. And we can see that clearly on this scope. And we can stop it. <clears throat> you can see it's both channels and it only seems to be in the radio circuit. Okay, that's AM, FM, and out of FM. So our noise is coming from the FM. I'm going to show you where I think it is and then we're going to take a look at that circuit. Well, there appears to be a problem with the FM except that the FM section itself seems to be good. And I'll explain what I mean by that. When I listen to the FM radio, I notice the left channel is way lower than the right. And looking at the scope, and I'm going to zoom in a little so you get a good look at this, the scope looks perfectly fine. That's two scope probes right down here coming directly off the multiplex section, left and right channel. And if you look, we go Mono, right equals minus left. You notice they flipped the out of phase, which is normal. Then I have right channel only, left channel only. I'm pretty sure I've got everything connected correctly, so I don't know if there's a, there's a reverse function on here. Maybe that's what it is, left only. No, it doesn't affect that. I'm looking directly out. Oh. Never mind. My probes are connected here. I'm not even looking at the speakers. So here we go. Mono. Right equals minus left. Left only. Right only. So we're good right out of the multiplex board. However, if you look at the analyzer now, 
Don't worry about the distortion, just look at the amplitude. If I turn it up, you notice the left channel is way lower than the right channel. So there's a problem probably in the switching. Could be dirty contact, could be bad solder joint, but I'm gonna have to trace this out because it looks like the problem may be in the selector switch. Now if I go and I put a signal in from the analyzer through the audio section here, let's see, aux. Here we go. See, they're much better matched. So the problem isn't in the amplifier, it's somewhere between the output of the multiplex board and the input to probably the control amplifier for tone controls because I believe all the signal goes through there. So I'm gonna have to go back and look through here and see exactly where the wires from the multiplex board go to. I printed out this layout and I traced from the multiplex board to these selector switches. I really suck at going through switch wafers, but it became pretty apparent that if you look at the very long pointer here, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen so you can see this better. This is the common contact here, and all the other ones move around and connect that to the head amp. Now, in most things, the head amp is only for the phono stage, but apparently the FM goes through here too. I have the analyzer feeding into the, the uh, phono input, and it gives us pretty much the same thing we're getting from FM. We have weak left channel, good right channel. And if I go to the FM, which is right here, you can see we got the same thing. Now we know this is FM because I can go left, right, whatever. But we have a problem in the head amp, and I would never have thought to look here because as I mentioned, in most items, this is strictly for the phono stage. So I'm gonna take a look at that and see if I can determine where the problem is. But I think that's where the pop is coming from. And I'm pretty sure this is where our amplitude difference is coming from. This is the input to the head amplifier board. Now, if we look at the output, and it has quite a bit of gain, so let me turn these up. The outputs are, these are Pins 1 and 11 for input. The outputs are pins 4 and 8. Go to... That's pin 4. And that's pin 8. Turn the gain. There you can see it. <clears throat> there's our problem right there so it's on this head amp board for sure and this is the phono input but even though it doesn't say this in the circuit description the FM goes through here the auxiliary does not so I'm gonna plug this into auxiliary this is aux one okay Try not to knock the camera. You can see the aux doesn't go through here. That's just triggering and there's noise because we're looking at the output. But the problem's definitely on this board. Now I'm probably going to replace, you can see where the scope probes are. I'm probably going to replace all the electrolytics and the small signal transistors on here, but I am going to find where the problem is before I do that so we can pinpoint it. All right, after a little poking around, it looks like the problem is Q1 in the left channel, but as I said, I'm going to just recap and replace all the small signal transistors on this board. So let me get that done and we'll be right back. I got the board repopulated with uh, fresh capacitors and replaced all four of these transistors. Um, I'm pretty sure Q1 was the problem, but if it went, the other ones may not have been far behind. So I just wanted to replace them all while I was in there. And if we look at the scope and the distortion analyzer, and I've got to zoom out a little to get them both in here. And I turn this up. You can see 
we have good outputs. A few watts is not unusual. These volume pots are worn at this stage. But that was a problem. I never would have guessed that because I've never seen one of these that has a uh, a head unit or a phono pre that every that other things go through. But if uh, if you look at the schematic, you can see right here that there are outputs for the phono and outputs for the tuner. Nowhere did it say it did that. And this brings up something I've mentioned before. It's if you're going to do this to try and make money, it's a good idea to specialize in certain brands. Some guys do Sansui's, some guys do Yamaha's like my friend Skip, some guys do uh, Marantz. I'm really just doing it to gain knowledge, not really doing it for money, which brings up another point. A lot of people contact me to see if I can take in their, their equipment to fix. I don't have time. I have a full-time job, um, house family that kind of thing i just don't have time to do anything other than fix steve's stuff and he certainly keeps me supplied anyhow that was the whole problem with this and again as always i thank everyone for watching and i like giving back to the community that's given me so much thanks a lot everyone